Here we go, a quick review of everything you need on the calculator for your AP Stats test. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna check how to reset the memory because you might be given a calculator that's not yours and you just wanna reset it to make sure it's good. This will erase all the programs and everything in it so it's not necessary if you own your own calculator. But first we're gonna go into the memory which is above the plus sign here. We're gonna hit seven, we're gonna reset all the RAM hit one and then two and now we have a brand new calculator it's been reset so we don't have any you know polar graphs or anything like that perfect next thing we're going to do we're going to go into where it says stat and learn how to use our lists after we reset the memory the lists should be cleared okay the clear list so we can put numbers in it let's put some numbers in it so i've added some numbers to l1 and l2 remember you can go back through and you can type over any number if you want to if you want to change the number to a different one. If you want to use the lists and you want to do some calculations with them, you can just go to the heading of a different list. So let me go up here to L3, go to the very top. Once you do that, then you can say, all right, let's take L2. So we hit second L2. Remember the shortcuts are above the buttons. And then maybe we multiply it by two. We want to double all the numbers. That is a quick way to do it. Or sometimes with like tree diagrams, I want to multiply probabilities. So you could go to the top of a list and say, uh, maybe put probabilities for one branch in L1 and the other ones will be in L2 and you just wanna multiply them, you can put those together. Perfect, so that's how you can work with the lists. Now sometimes you want to add all the numbers up in a list or find the average, the mean. So I always like to go to the home screen so you can quit. Here's where it says list. There are a lot of operations here under list. Usually the math is where we find most of them that we need. So like choice five here, you can say five, find the sum of L1 and it will just find the sum for you. Very nice, what else is in there? Let's find out. Go back to math, maybe the standard deviation, you might need that or the median, all those things are great. And you just need to tell it which list to look for and it'll find those calculations. But don't forget about under stat, you can go to calculate. We have also one variable statistics. That does pretty much everything. So. You can tell it which list to use in the frequency list. That's if you have two columns and maybe the second column tells you how many of the first column you have. So maybe you have like 21 ones. Let's look at what we have in here. So maybe we have two ones and four twos, right? So if that's the case, then you can use the frequency list. But if not, let's just go back where we were. One variable stats will tell you so much information about your data. You can just leave the frequency list blank if you want. You, uh, choose calculate and look at all these stats that come out. So the first one is X bar. That's a mean obviously, right? We know that. And then we have the sum and the sum of the squares all the way down. We have the standard deviation S of X. And if you scroll down, you will have the five number summary, which is important for making a box plot. So now that we've talked about box plots, let's put one up on our screen here. So we have to go to make a box plot under stat plot. So second stat plot. Here are all of our plots. If you ever have a problem with a graph showing up, it's probably that you have a plot turned on that you didn't know about. So you can go up into the stat plots and turn it off, but I'm gonna turn one on now and make a box plot. Going over, remember we have a modified box plot and we have a regular box plot. I like to, to use the modified one because it has outliers. So when you choose that, it just asks you for one list again and we have the frequency. And what I like to do is zoom nine. If you hit zoom and then the nine button, it'll make uh, the window perfect for you so that you don't have to worry about the values you need to put in there. You can hit the trace button and it'll tell you the five number summary. That's what we just calculated before. So that's all possible using a box plot. If you wanna do two box plots, you need to turn on two graphs. This might show up if you have to compare distributions. So let's put on two real quick so I can see what that looks like. Again, when I hit zoom nine, it's gonna fix the window. Oh my goodness, I turned the same box plot on. That is embarrassing. I was gonna do L2. Let's do that. I clicked the wrong button, zoom nine. There we go, good to go. Notice how it fixed the window so that it includes the second box plot as well. Again, you can trace it. You hit up and down and you'll go from box plot to box plot. That is pretty easy. Now, sometimes we need to make a scatter plot. So what I'm gonna do is go back into the stat plots we're going to turn, uh, let's turn the second one off real quick. Perfect. You know, there is a shortcut. We can go right up here and just click that and it'll, it'll move back to the other one. I'm going to do a scatter plot. Now remember scatter plots, you need an X and a Y. So we have L1 and L2. Let me hit zoom again, zoom nine. Here's the scatter plot. This is using the data that I put in L1 and L2. Again, you can trace it. 
Now, what's it normally do we have to do? We have to make a re regression equation. We have to make the equation between an X and a Y set of values. So don't forget when we have to do that, we really need to make sure, and you need to do this one time, when you hit mode, you can go into, what are we looking for? Stat diagnostics. That has to be turned on when we do AP stats. All right, so we're gonna go over to on. Now maybe at any time you're like, I forgot where something is. There is a part of your calculator called the catalog. All right, if you go into the catalog, it has everything in the calculator that you could want. And notice that it's in alphabetical order. So if you need something like this starts with K, you can hit that button there and it'll take you down. H-I-J-K-L takes you to the end of the K. Oh, there is no case. Let's take you to the beginning of the case. All right, but it'll take you down the line to save you some time. So back to what we were doing. We were doing stat diagnostics. Did I turn them on? You gotta make sure they're turned on because that's how you get R and R squared, right? So let's do our linear regression. If we hit stat, we go over to calculate. We have two choices, but remember also you have some down here for exponential or logarithmic. I don't know, you probably won't need logarithmic. But let's go to choice four, the simple line. We have L1 and L2, frequency list, we'll leave blank again. I like to store the equation in a Y equals so that it'll graph it when I create this regression equation. So in order to do that, we can hit the VARS button, go over to Y variables, and then hit function. All right, we can put that in there. Now when I calculate this, because I turned on my stat diagnostics, all right, those have to be turned on, I get R and R squared. And see this equation, it's 1.997 x plus 0.44. Remember, it doesn't matter which one of these linear regressions we use, but because I did that y equals, now it's up here, and I can do a little zoom nine and check it out, the line, uh, the regression equation is right there, but sometimes people are like, I need to see a residual plot. Okay, so the residual plot, how are we gonna do that? Well, I just need to, to graph the residuals over the x. So I'm gonna go back to my stat plot. This one's already turned on, so I'll just fix that one. Let's put the X's stay the same, but the list for Y needs to be the residuals. So when we did the equation, it created a residual list. We go second list, and at the bottom it says resid. And so I can do L1, which are the X, with the resids. I have to, uh, I'm gonna turn my line off because sometimes that line stays on there. Did you know you could go on top of the equal sign and just hit enter? How about that? It just shuts it off, it doesn't erase it. I'm gonna do zoom nine, and now we have a residual plot where we can check the residuals. I can trace the points, and it'll tell me the value of each residual right there. Whew, I need to take a breath. All right, next part of our course, we're gonna go quit, and we're gonna look at all the tests and where that occurs. So if we hit the stat button and go over to tests, then you notice we have all of our tests right here. In AP stats, we're not gonna do a Z-test, so don't ever choose Z-test, don't ever choose two sample Z-tests. So don't ever use one, don't ever use three but we do have our t-test. Remember, you'd use that for match pairs. We have one proportion, two proportion tests, and then the intervals. Again, don't use z-interval, okay, because we have a proportion interval that's in here, but you can scroll down and find all of the different tests we have. Chi-square test, remember, you have to use a matrix. So if we do choose a chi-square test, let's hit enter there, uh, it's gonna ask you where you put the observed and where do you want me to put the expected. So you put the matrix in of the observed. Let's find out how to do that. So second matrix, okay, we get, go into the matrices. We wanna edit uh, matrix A here. All right, so how big is the matrix? We need to tell it dimensions. So we'll just say it's two by three and we'll put some numbers in so that we can do a, uh, a test. So this would be like a chi-square test for independence or association, or a chi-square test for homogeneity of populations, right? I wanna see if these are the same. So in order to do that test, I'm gonna go back to my home screen. I always quit to go to my home screen. I hit stat, I go to the left, so I can go to tests, I scroll up. Whoa, that makes it fast. Go to C, I hit enter. Uh, my observed are in A, it's gonna put expected values in B. I can go down and calculate. I bet this will be, oh, look at that, super significant. How about that? Here's the degrees of freedom, if we ever need to know that, in the chi-square value right here. If I need to go see those expected counts, you can go back into the matrix here and check out that we have a matrix B. We can go down and we can just click on it and it'll tell us what our expected values are for each of the different cells here. So that's useful. But remember, if you have a goodness of fit test, then we need to use the lists. So let's go down, uh, let's see what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna quit again, I'll go stat. Let's go over to tests and I'll go up to goodness of fit test, which is D. So 
you have to put your observed and your expected counts. Remember, observed have to be whole numbers. Expected can be decimal. Uh, and then the degrees of freedom. So let's pretend like I have my observed and my expected in L1 and L2. Uh, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven, so degrees of freedom would be six, right? So I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go from the home screen. I go to the test, go up to chi-square. I'm gonna hit enter. Degrees of freedom would be seven. Did I count that right? Anyways, we're gonna calculate. And look, the contributions are right here. So they might ask you like which of the, you know, which of the numbers contributed the most. So we have 0.5, we have one, we have 2.2. You can scroll to the right and it'll tell you all these values here, uh, which category contributed the most to the chi-square statistic, p-value, degrees of freedom. All right, we're good with that. The other tests we have in intervals, uh, you can see them all right here. If we were to do a one proportion z interval, for example, they always want whole numbers here. So if they give you a problem that has percents, you need to put like 23 out of maybe 52. You need to figure out what the whole number values were. And sometimes that takes a little bit of math, but when you calculate it, you get yourself your confidence interval with P hat and N right there. All right, I think that basically does it. Everything else in the calculator should be good to go if you know that stuff. This is Mr. Kelly. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up and we'll try to answer those questions for you. Good luck on your AP stats test.